So, today we will talk about threat intelligence. So, threat intelligence is commonly known in the arena of blue teaming. So, if you are a blue teamer or if you work in the defensive side of cybersecurity, you may have heard about threat intelligence. Um, or if you are getting started in threat intelligence, you may be curious about what are the most important aspects of threat intelligence. So, in this video, I'm going to be outlining the most important threat as uh, most important aspects of threat intelligence, and we'll be taking an example from Troy Hackme about the ISACs, which is Information Sharing and Analysis Centers. All right, so threat intelligence, as the name depicts, is all about gathering information about the threat landscape and the recent activities of the adversaries, malwares. Uh, the indicators of compromise whatsoever. So the first thing about TT about the intelligence is that understanding the TTPs. And if you don't know what is TTP, you may refer back to my video about MITRE framework. TTPs stands for tactics, technology, tactics, technique, procedure. So tactic is the attacker's goal or objective. Why uh, they are attacking your organization? Why are they conducting their attack? What is the tactic? What is the objective? The technique is how the adversary reaches or, at, or achieves their goal. And P is the procedure. The procedure is how the technique is executed. All of that is detailed in my video about MITRE. You may refer back to the video. Understand how the MITRE works. So in a nutshell, MITRE is, you may uh, visit MITRE website to learn about the different stages the attacker goes through when they attack your organization and you may refer to the shield to understand how to mitigate them from the blue team perspective now the second aspect of threat intelligence is the let me use the blue one we have the cti the cti stands for cyber threat intelligence so after you have gathered information about the attackers and you have learned how they are conducting their attacks how what are the techniques they're using and how to you protect yourself, you may translate or transform this information into something called the CTI, which is Cyber Threat Intelligence. So Cyber Threat Intelligence is the information you have gathered about your adversaries, about their techniques, their procedures, what are the indicators of compromise. And actually, the third aspect, which is IOC, stands for Indicators of Compromise, is part of Cyber Threat Intelligence. So if you work as a threat hunter or threat intelligence expert, you may be uh, tasked with gathering information about current threats, indicators of compromise, current malwares, and combined or transform this data into meaningful cyber threat intelligence in order to combine or integrate uh, the recently gathered intelligence into your risk management plan or into your blue team strategy. Now, the third aspect is the IOCs, which is the indicators of compromise. Now, what are the indicators of compromise? They are specific attributes of specific attributes or aspects of a malware or that distinguishes malware from another malware. So an example of IOC is file hash or IP address, IPP4, IPP6, URL or domain name. All of these are indicators of compromise that you can label that with this information you can label the malware and give it a classification or a category now the fourth aspect is the isaac or the info sharing and analysis centers these are platforms or centers that are dedicated to share information about threats malwares technically they are concerned about sharing information of Malware is indicators of compromise. An example will be Alien Fault OTX, which we will be studying in this video. Okay, so if you are a blue teamer or if you gather information about threats, you will be using Isaacs to research indicators of compromise or even create your own indicators of compromise and share it with the community. So let's take an example Alien Fault OTX, the dashboard, how it looks like, and then we're going to jump to try hack me to see the example laid down in their platform. So show desktop. And this is the dashboard of, um, right, okay. 
This is the dashboard of Alien Vault. You can create an account for free to explore the platform. So, as you can see, the dashboard contains two or three mini views. So first one, we have visualization of malware clusters. So in here, we see the most active malware in the wild. So for example, if you click on this one, you see the malware name is Factor Win32 Verview. So this is witnessed as the most active malware right now, currently by Alien Fault. And down there, you can see more information about the malware, the features. And here, if you click on the sample process visualization, you will see how the malware works. So click to view full screen. So this is a sample. And this is uh, an example chart or visualization of how the malware works. What are the processes it executes, how it operates. So the main process is, as you can see, LPM something like lpm.exe and we see the DLLs as well. All right, so in this view, you will see the most active malwares. Now on the right, there's something called subscribe pulses. Now, mainly Alien Vault uses pulses to distribute information about malwares. Now, the information are specifically indicators of compromise. This is not a news feed, it is only indicators of compromise. So from time to time or every day, let me say, early Vault gathers information about malware, specifically the indicators of compromise, and they publish them in the dashboard here as pulses. Now these pulses, as you can see, you can see the owner of the pulse, because if you subscribe to the premium version of Alien Fault, you will see pulses from other communities. That's why you need to be careful about the source of the pulse so that you don't get false positives in your research. Let's take an example. So, as you can see here, we have many sections to look at, but the most importantly, we look at the description of the pulse, and we look at the references. References indicate the group that published the uh, malware and the indicators of compromise, and here we see the ATT and CK IDs. This is related to the MITRE framework. We see the techniques and the tactics used in this malware. So the title is Transparent Drive APT expands its Windows malware arsenal. Transparent Drive, also known as APT36 and Mythic Leopard, continues to create fake domains, mimicking legitimate military and defense organizations as a core component of their core operations. Cisco Taylor's previous research has mainly linked this group to Crimson Rat, but the new campaigns show they are expanding their Windows malware arsenal with Oblique Rat. So down here we see the indicators of compromise. An example would be uh, the email address. Here we have URLs and file hashes. So on the table here we see host names or domain names. These domain names, if you witness them in a malware sample, it means that we are talking about this advanced persistent group. So you may add these uh, indicators of compromise, the domain names to your Yara rules, if you're using Yara to conduct a malware analysis or research for indicators of compromise, or you may add them to your firewall or IPS so that you spot uh, a malware if it enters your network with these domains. Let's see here, what do we have else? And on the left, you can see more information about the indicators of compromise itself. If you go to details. So here we see example or more detailed information about this host name, which is contabo7.net. And you see who is information about this domain if you want to research more about the adversaries using this domain name. Okay, let's take another example.
Okay, finally. So let's see your lemon doc actors target Microsoft Exchange server new system PC variant. Let's let's take a look at this one. So new system PC variant is a prelude to RU RYUK ransomware. As you can see, if you scroll down to the most important section, which is indicators of compromise, we see IP addresses, we see file hashes. So all of these are valuable information in your threat intelligence research. So you may take this information or IOCs to create YALA rules or to create strategies to fight malware for your own for your own organization or your own client. Okay, let's take or let's now explain the sections in the alien vault. So we have the dashboard, we talked about the dash dashboard. Now we have the browse. Browse, this will allow us to see all the new pulses and sort them by various by the category. So for example, if I'm interested to research pulses using malware families, or by indicators, or by users, or by adversaries, I select my own criteria and I base my research based on that criteria. For example, I can take more research about the APT16. If I click on that, so here I see all of the pulses connected to this advanced persistent group. As you can see, we have many pulses about this group. If you click on Wikiworm, and description is saying it is sample malware. So nothing detailed here. You can also search by malware families. So here you look at the pulses starting from the malware name. If you are interested in specific type of malware, let's say you are interested in searching more about this limited to hacks, let's say your organization has been infected with this malware. So I'm going to take a look more details about the uh, IOCs. So you see the file hashes. And also we see features, console output, network activity, and use the use of Baker. So I have two reports about this. The executable is compressed using UPX. The visualization of the uh, backdoor how it works, we can load it here, from here. Okay, scan endpoints. To scan endpoints, it's a service from Alien Vault OTX to scan your endpoints using indicators of compromise, which is a very useful feature. If you take a look at that, as you can see, you can just get started and scan your endpoints for indicators of compromise, I haven't tried this, but it is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, create pulse. So in here, you can create your own indicators of compromise. So if you have a malware, okay, and you have analyzed the malware, and you have determined the indicators of compromise, you can upload them here to contribute to the community by just putting the indicators of compromise here, or you can just upload the file that contains indicators of compromise. You have another option, which is submitting a malware sample. If you submit a malicious file from here, you can, uh, or AM Vault can extract all of the indicators of compromise automatically. API integration, this is kind of synchronization service with other exchange or threat exchange platforms. Okay, so that is all about LEM Vault. This is um, just brief. Now let's jump to try hack me to see the challenge. So the challenge here is in the investigated scenarios. So let me launch the machine. Now the challenge in try hack me is kind of uh, connected to the scenario where you have malware samples and you are tasked to create the indicators of compromise. Of course, this is an example from here, but the real tasks are here. Okay. Let me jump to my virtual machine. Make sure I'm connected. All right. So, launch. Most of all, I'm going to need to launch RTP session.
Okay. New one. So we take the IP address. The server is IP and then the credentials are here. Username is John. Password is password, some password. And connect. So let's take this to the right. Lost connection. Let's check our VPN connection. Reestablish the session. Uh, seems like we're gonna have problems because the connection is not working. All right. Okay, finally, so we are connected now. Okay, so in here we have two malware samples. Scenarios, scenario one and scenario two. So we are tasked to extract some of the indicators of compromise, some of them. Because the example in TryHackMe is non-exhaustive. Uh, it requires only to extract the file hash and the file size. So let's go through that and see what are the questions. So we require to find the name of the file, which is also an indicator of compromise, the size, and then the five for both of the scenarios. But we will extract more uh, than the required. And we lost connection. Okay. Scenario one, the name of the file. So we rename the file as rename, copy that, paste in scenario one. What is the size of the file from scenario one? So part of the problem indicators of compromise is finding the file size. The actual size is 96, as you can see, 535. So we copy that. What is the size on disk of the file from scenario one in bytes? So, pretty easy. Uh, 
Here we go. Copy paste is not working. Ah, it works. What is the MD5 hash of the file from scenario one? Now, finding MD5 hash is a pretty is pretty easy task. So you have to use a tool called let's go to tools. Win MD5 run. So here we select a file for which we would like to extract the MD5 hash. Or we can upload it online to VirusTotal or any service that finds the hash of the sample. So current file MD5 checksum value is checksum. So here. What is the name of the file from scenario two? So we get back to documents scenarios two. It's cryptowall.pin or binary file. Oh dot pin. What is the size of the file from scenario two in bytes? Again, the same process. Copy that. What is the size on disk of the file from scenario two in bytes? I don't know why, it just copies the password whenever I copy the file on the disk. <laughs> No idea. Ah, uh, now we talk. Copy one more time. Please, copy that. Okay. So, what's the MD5 hash of the file from scenario 2? The same way, we open the application in desktop. Run, browse to scenario one. So this is the MD5 hash. Make sure this is copied and answer with this. Okay, the room is done, but that's, that's not everything. Use the strings to extract information such as the Bitcoin addresses, payment addresses, domain names, IPv4, IPv6, since all of these are part of the indicators of compromise that uh, if you would like to submit them, so you have to find them. So we can use st strings. So for that, we launch the command line. We navigate to desktop tools. Okay, so here strings. And we define the path to the file for which we want to extract the IOCs. So it is in documents, scenario, scenario. Let's select the crypto wall sample. Let's copy the path and get back. So here, paste. So we have to define the file name. So paste this and type the file name. Crypto wall.pin dash accept the service agreements and select an output file. In this case, it's going to be string. Okay, now let's examine the file. So if you look here in the directory, we see a new file has been created, string crypto wall. Click on that, and we see the strings that have been extracted from the file. So your task here is to search and look through these strings and extract the meaningful ones. I would recommend you take this file to Linux and use grip 
in Linux to extract meaningful information such as Bitcoin, ransom, payments, domain names. Let's take an example. If you search for um, dub, 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 to find internet addresses, my next, so look for domain names. Nothing in here, all right. HTTP, how about this one? Select up, nothing in HTTP, all right. So there are no external calls based on our search. Let's look if there is any payment address. We're looking for something like ransom. Can't find ransom, payment, can't find payment. Uh, one or let's look for uh, Bitcoin pay so we have pay here not relevant these are example of strings that you can use actually to find relevant information of course, these are not all, the, not all of the strings that you can search with, but that's a way to find the IOCs. Sometimes you wouldn't find the appropriate strings such as the payment addresses or the domain names so we would be good enough with only the uh, file hash okay so that was about this video today i hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video